Hey everyone, for today's lesson, we're just going to spend a little bit of time together talking about transformations of functions and the order in which they take place. So for number one, given this parent function f of x equals x cubed, we are going to describe the transformations that take place for g of x. Okay, and we're going to do so in the correct order. So when we have transformations on a function, we always look inside the parentheses first, and inside the parentheses will be horizontal transformations. So that could be a horizontal dilation or a horizontal shift left or right. Okay, so first though, let's go into the calculator here and let's graph the parent function so that after we decide what the transformations are, we can actually see how they look on a graph. So we'll go into y equals and type in x cubed. And when I graph this, I want this to be dotted. So I'm going to highlight that and hit enter until it's a dotted line. And that's what I want right there. So when I graph it, there it is, it's dotted. Okay, so this is what a cube function looks like. That's the parent function. So the transformations that take place. First, there is one inside of this function, so it gets the cubed just like the x does. Okay, and what that is, when we multiply inside, it is a horizontal dilation. Okay, and a horizontal transformation is always opposite of face value, so it doesn't dilate by four, it, it dilates by one-fourth. Okay, so it becomes one-fourth as wide, so it actually is going to get skinnier. Okay, then we look outside of the cube function and we see a plus three, that's going to be vertical. And that is at face value. It says plus three, it means up three. So for number two, it shifts up three. So let's graph it and see what that looks like. So for y2, I'll graph four x to the third power plus three, and there's what it looks like. So it actually got skinnier, and this vertex shifted up three units. It's kind of difficult to see exactly where the vertex is. I'm gonna hit zoom six, I'm sorry, zoom four, to get a little bit closer look right there at the top of this. This is our vertex now. It was at the origin, now it's right here, up four, and we've got a skinnier graph. So back to y equals, and I'll clear out y2, and we'll move on down to this next set of transformations. So we're starting with f of x equals x cubed. Now we've got some transformations taking place inside. Okay, so the first thing we look for is multiplication on this x. Multiplication comes before addition, and we're multiplying by a negative. When we multiply by a, by a negative, that causes a reflection. So it's going to flip over an axis. When it's inside, it is horizontal, so it's going to flip over the y-axis. Okay, So if my pen here is the y-axis, it's going to flip over that. So that's a horizontal reflection. Okay, So for 1, I will say it will flip over the y-axis. Okay, then we have a plus 4 inside, but that doesn't just mean it shifts by 4. Okay, so the shift looks like this. If I factor out this negative, I get negative, and then I have x minus 4 minus 2. So it's a minus 4 inside here that represents the shift. And because it's inside, it's actually going to go opposite that sign, which is right 4. So this will shift right 4. Okay, so we need to factor out this coefficient of x, whatever is here. We've got to factor that out to find out what the shift is. Or the short way is we do this number divided by the coefficient of x. 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4, 
which means it's going to shift right four. Then outside we have a minus two, so for step three it is going to shift down two. Okay, now let's graph that. Okay, so we have parentheses, then negative x plus four to the third power. I need to close my parentheses, then to the third power, minus two. Okay, so now it's backwards. That's the reflection. So the reflection happens first. This is the original. The re reflection over the y-axis would look like this. And then it shifts 4 to the right and down 2. Okay, on to number 2. So we will clear out y equals. Okay, and we'll put in... 1 over x, so I'm going to hit the math key and over to number, then I'm going to hit up one time and it'll take me to the bottom to get a fraction. So 1 over x and I will make that a dotted graph. So this is going to be a rational function and a rational function looks like that. Okay, now I'm going to go back to a standard zoom, so zoom 6, and there it is. Okay, so what happens to g of x? Okay, so this right here is the same as 2 times 1 over x minus 3. This multiplication by 2 is not inside of the function. If it was inside of the function, it would be down here in the denominator. So what is inside the function? This minus 3 is. So that's what's going to happen first because it's inside the function. It is going to shift right 3 units. Okay, so I'm going to take this shape and shift it 3 units to the right. Okay, then we are multiplying outside. That is a vertical dilation. So there is a vertical dilation by 2. So that means it's going to get two times taller. So it's going to shift three to the right, and then it's going to get two times taller. And when you look at the graph here, it's going to be a little bit difficult to tell that it actually got two times taller. This type of graph doesn't really show that very clearly. But we'll go into y equals, and down to y2, and then make a fraction. So the math button right here, then over to number, up once brings us to the bottom. And we hit enter, and we can type in 2 over x minus 3, and graph. Okay, so it shifted 3 units to the right, and it is a little bit taller. It's kind of difficult to tell that, but it is. Back to y equals, and we will clear out y2, so we can make room for a new y2. So, what happens first here? Inside of the function, I'm multiplying by 2. That is a horizontal dilation, and it is by 1 half. Okay, so when we, horiz when we horizontally dilate, it's by the reciprocal. Vertical dilation is at face value. So I've got a horizontal dilation by 1 half, so it's going to get skinnier. Okay, so the width will be half as wide as it was before. Then we've got a 3 added outside, so it is going to shift up 3 units. So we have 3 plus, and then math, over to number, up to get to fraction, 1 over 2x, and graph. Okay, so it got narrower, which again is hard to tell with this type of graph, but it did. All of the x values got cut in half. Okay, in this first one, all the y values got doubled. In this one, all the x values got cut in half. And then it shifted three units up. 